Bamboo. Bamboo. It's one of the most versatile items in the game. It is fuel. It can be used for scaffolding. It's a redstone block you can use in farm. And as of 120, bamboo just got even more interesting. It's not only a very useful block, it's also a decorative block. And you get all of these new items that you can play around with. And they all come from that, the bamboo. In this video, I will show you how to make an efficient bamboo farm. Hello dudes and dudesses and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be building a bamboo farm and I know, I know, there's a lot of designs out there and there's a lot of them that will be faster and bigger than the one I'm going to show you today. But here's the thing. I really don't like flying machine farms. If I can in any way avoid them, I do. It's because I'm a scatterbrain. I often fly away unloading chunks and when I get back, ah, the flying machines have somehow gotten tangled or stopped mid-air or something like that. So if I can avoid it, I will. And of course, if you want to have enormous amounts of bamboo, this is not the farm for you. But if you want to have uh, enough bamboo to do a lot of building blocks, to do a lot of scaffolding and so on, then this might be the one for you. And here it is. That's it. This is the farm. You're looking at it. There's a reason for the size. The size is basically based on the redstone because as you can see in this farm, when one piston fires, they basically all fire. It means that we can use fewer observers to have the whole farm running. There's no slime used in this farm, not at all. And there's only one minecart and a chest. Well, you can have more than one chest. I know you want to ask about the rates, so I'm going to give it to you right here. It's 32 stacks an hour, an hour give or take, which is uh, just more than one chest. So two hours, you will have a double chest of bamboo. So as I said, if you want to have a big super smelter or something like that, this is probably not the farm for you. This is a slice of the farm and I will show you just how it works. As you can see underneath, we have rails and a hopper minecart going around, picking up whatever that's harvested and putting it off to this unloader right here and as i said one minecart is enough you can see this one is unloading right now and it's a slow unload but it can keep up with the farm over the rails you have a row of dirt or in this case mud and the reason i've used mud here i will tell you uh, just in a second but you can use dirt any kind of dirt anything that the bamboo grows on and the bamboo can grow three high as you can see but it can only be detected in three places in the sides and in the middle and when one of those grow up and is detected the row is harvested but as i said in the beginning it is all connected everything and that is why i've chosen this size of the farm it's basically uh, slice based so you can uh, in principle prolong it infinitely but in this case here where it's 16 long uh, and there's only 15 between the redstone elements, the redstone pulse giving elements, it will fire all of the slices at uh, once every time a bamboo grows up to any of these observers right here. And we turned the back for a second and now it has harvested. So that's how the farm works. Then there is the question of lighting. Bamboo only grows when it's uh, more than light level 9. And that means that if you want it to grow uh, at night time, you need some artificial lighting. I have used uh, frog lights right here and you can use all three variants. But you can also just use a jack-o-lantern, a sea lantern or a shroom light. 
You could, in theory, also use one of these uh, redstone lamps, but that would require some uh, powering up here, so probably these are better. Now, the farm is very simple, and I'm not going to do a block-by-block -block tutorial, but if I go up here, you can take a screenshot, and you can count the way. The farm is 16 by 18, and then you just place rails like this. I've used powered rails all the way. You can use far fewer powered rails. Uh, it's not important. It doesn't speed it up. You can actually probably get away with having one only in the middle right here and the ones in the end. The minecart just travels, snakes its way down here and the way back every time on every turn picking up any bamboo lying on the floor. Have you noticed the lever? Is it really getting under your skin? Do you feel a need to change the direction of it? <laughs> I'm gonna leave it like this. This is a slice from the other side. As you can see, there's exactly 15 uh, pistons, normal pistons right there. And of course, this doesn't have to be glass. It could be any material. And you just place it like this. Now, I said earlier that I have chosen to use mud blocks here and it's because mud blocks have a property that allows you because they're just slightly smaller than a full block to actually suck things through them with a hopper so if you have enough iron and wood to make hoppers and you're not worried about hopper lag you could make this setup as well just put hoppers under each row all the way and then combine them on this side and put everything that's harvested into a chest. If you're a regular on this channel, you know that I always advise that you can turn off your farms. And that is what this lever is for. You can see it goes all the way down here. And only this final uh, row here is not locked, but now it is. So if you turn on both levers, the farm is locked. If you look at the farm from this side, then you can see there's one slice here with the thing that you choose the bamboo to grow on and it's closed off every slice is basically two blocks wide and then there's a minecart running under the growth block if you can call it that uh, in every slice the reason why scaffolding is so fascinating a block is because that it doesn't have a hitbox from the side which means that you the player and mobs can move through it like this and it doesn't have a hitbox from the bottom either. Apart from all the new 120 blocks, I use a bamboo for a lot of things. Like in this, the Fabness 3.2, I use it because you can actually have a water column and you can have a minecart going through it and snapping to a rail, even a rail that's diagonal like this. Maybe you knew that trick, but you can do even more crazy things it just hops two blocks of air like that and you can have a string in here for instance registering it and you can use it as a counter for instance for a minecart going by i haven't shown this trick before in any of my videos i believe so this is the first and what can you use this for well you can use this in many ways as i said as a counter like this but for instance if i do something like that and then i put this one there I can also remove this one right there. I can remove that. And then for instance, I could take rails like this and I could place them if I took that away. And then I could have a minecart going over there and I just remove that and it would still, you could have a minecart and it would go past if it was powered. It would go past this uh, scaffolding here, even though there's not a rail on it. And you could still have this hopping through another rail like this. So there's a lot of possibilities in this. In my super simple guardian farm, where you actually use scaffolding to hold back one column of water that will allow all of these guardians to travel up here where they get killed. How about the Iron Beast? Version 2. I use the same scaffolding technique with only one water column in the middle, pushing the golems up here 18 blocks or 16 blocks away so they can get, get killed. Or how about this one-dimensional shulker farm, the possibly most simple shulker farm in Minecraft, 
where we actually use a special trick with the scaffolding that makes the shulkers go up very, very, very fast without using minecarts, water or any other kind of uh, assistance. They just do it all by themselves where they get up here and get killed. All right, dudes and dudesses, thank you for watching. And uh, remember to leave a like. And if you're brand new, subscribe. The channel is growing. It's nearing 10,000 subscribers. And we want to reach it before the year, end of the year. So every subscriber counts. And remember, it's free. And you can always unsubscribe. See you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>